Hello, it's Scott Manley, and I am standing on an alien world watching moons orbit their parent world. This is, of course, Space Engine, and it is finally released in the Steam Store, which means you can pay for it and support the amazing work that the developer has been doing for all these years. So it is a universe exploration sandbox where you just basically fly around. This is Earth, and I'm obviously running things a little fast, and I have actually turned off the clouds, so I should probably turn those back on. Filter objects, clouds back on. The reason I turned those off, I shall explain earlier. This is time running very, very fast. Let's return this time to normal speed. So Space Engine has the entire universe in it. That's its goal is to represent everything spacey in one place. And we got to start in our home, right? This is Earth. This is down into Indonesia and Southeast Asia. And you can fly around it. This is terrain data based on real sources. Uh, obviously, it doesn't go to ridiculous resolutions because it has to fill in the details as you get closer. It's trying to guess what this texture should look like here. So it gives us grassy fields. Now, of course, as I said, you can go anywhere, right? So we can go to the moon. Just search for it and bang, the moon is there. And the moon, again, based on real data from the Lunar uh, Reconnaissance Orbiter. You can fly down and try to find your favorite craters that you've seen spacecraft crashing into over the last few years. Yes, I'm talking about you, Bereshit. Um, or yeah, we can bring this up and you can take a look at the entire structure of the solar system. Or you can zoom out here and watch the, like, the orbital mechanics as well. So we can actually run time forwards if we like and watch these things move around their parent body. See? Rather nice, isn't it? But let's return time to normal. Yeah, so I w the reasons I had clouds turned off is because you can go to Venus. So let's go to Venus and take a look at it. Obviously, Venus, as we know, has a very, very thick atmosphere made of carbon dioxide. It traps the heat, especially because it's carbon dioxide. It uh, is so hot at the surface, it will melt lead. If you were to stand on the surface of Venus you would be simultaneously crushed, corroded, broiled, and asphyxiated by its uh, horrific atmosphere. We can't see very much of it because of the clouds, which is why I went and turned off the clouds. <laughs> here we go here, clouds, da-da. So now we can actually see the terrain data that was captured by Magellan, which was an orbiter that went and mapped the whole surface and came up with all sorts of interesting, you know, information. We do have pictures from the surface of Venus, but they're not very good because, well, I mean, they're great, but they don't cover very much of the surface. Obviously, we would like to get more. Similarly, we can go to Saturn and we can click down and we can look for Titan and go there. It's so easy. No need to create a spaceship and, you know, trade and shoot things and make money and then spend hours and hours crossing the galaxy to get to do a bit of sightseeing. This is literally point and click and go there. If you want to manage a spaceship, Elite Dangerous is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the other thing that you're not going to have is any representation of life. If you want to go to worlds and play around and meet strange life and new civilizations, then uh, no Man's Sky is the option for you. Its worlds are not in any way realistic, but it is certainly fun to go down and see life and solve mysteries and things like this. Space Engine is for people that really don't need a game. They just need an infinite universe to explore. I don't know, there's not much here to see, but you, you see how they're filling in textures here that look somewhat similar to those seen by the uh, Huygens Lander from part of yeah, part of the, the Cassini program. Well, zooming out here, there is Saturn, there's Saturn's rings. Look at the shadow those leave on the world. That's exaggerated a little. You can adjust the photographic qualities by using these controls down here if you so need. Let's, let's do this. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. It is kind of nice that you can see shadows, but they're not usually that extreme. And before I forget, I should turn the clouds back on. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, let's actually go out to Pluto. So Pluto actually shows us a nice feature. Most of the solar system objects are obviously based on real data. But Pluto, if you remember, was a fly past. 
the New Horizons spacecraft flew past it at very high speed, so fast that Pluto didn't rotate enough for us to get good data on all of the sides of the, of the planet. In fact, there were parts which were essentially unimaged due to the uh, orientation of the fly past. So we have Pluto and we have some really nice uh, textures here, some detail. And again, you can go right down and take a look if you like. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, oh, and I've crashed into the surface. So once I stop, it'll start filling in the surface textures for me. This game will absolutely make your graphics card push it to the limits. Anyway, with, as I said, we have great details on some parts, but if you go elsewhere, the details start to fade out because those were imaged at a greater distance or whatever. What else do we have? Well, we have um, we have comets, right? We have Churyumov Gerasimenko, which was examined in detail by the Rosetta spacecraft. And we have this very, very familiar shape by now, this bilobate object, which has the valley in between. We have asteroids. You could go to Ceres, right? Examined by the Dawn spacecraft. Again, this is where we're going to go. Uh, Ceres, go to. So Ceres is known as a dwarf planet rather than a minor planet because it's a bit bigger. If you want to find a proper minor planet, uh, one example is... Uh, yes, yeah, Scott Manley, right? That is asteroid number 33434. It's, uh, the only thing we know about this object is its orbit and its uh, magnitude and its spectral color. So based on that, you estimate the size and then the game just fills in random terrain for you that roughly fits the size and position of the object. So that's great. We've covered a lot of the major things in the solar system, but guess what? You can go out beyond and find random objects here. You know what we should look for is Kepler, right? A Kepler uh, object. So Kepler 1b or whatever. This is a random star. Well, it's not a random star. It's a real star, which we know the spectral characteristics and size for, but we also know that there's a couple of planets orbiting it. So here's Kepler 10c. These are hot mini Neptunes. Let's go to this first one. Oh, that's that's it there. Sorry, the star. <laughs> Wait a second. No, the star is there. What am I saying? So these are real planets. We know they're there. We don't really know much about them beyond their estimated size based on the fact that they occlude their parent star. You can look for random stars in the night sky. Let's look for Betelgeuse. You might know this one. Betelgeuse, 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 and it appears, well, it does appear after I fly across the universe at millions of times the speed of light. In this case, they've generated a planetary system for it using the laws of physics. And we can go right in and see this planet here, which is basically sitting right on the very cusp of the surface. It's melting. The floor in this place is lava. It's hard. Oh, wow, and it has moons as well. Look at that. Torrid asteroids. Not to be confused with the torrid, spelled as in Taurus. This is just very, very hot. 187029. 2.9. It's hot. It's really hot. I don't know how this thing is surviving. It's being cooked. It's like a giant space baked potato made of lava. There. Science at its best. So this is great. You know, we have all of, all these objects. You can pick random things in space as well and go looking for them. So this is great, but you know, we can actually just go anywhere. We can pick random stars. This is uh, it's actually in the catalog somewhere. HP 25806. It is an orange dwarf of like a K-class orange dwarf. Its estimated mass is 2.56 solar masses, which is actually quite big. So it must be... Um, it's getting hot. <laughs> but there you have a star. And of course, if I select it, it gives us a bunch of planets. We can go to the planets. We can look at their moons and I can go to a random moon. These are all totally manufactured. Now, some of these, it will tell you the atmosphere physics. It will tell or it'll tell you the composition. It'll tell you the hydrosphere composition. And if those work out correct and the energy balance is correct, then it will sometimes spawn life. But it doesn't actually spawn objects living on the surface. It just creates, you know, just tells you that there would be life here. It's up to you to fill in 
you know, your imagined civilizations and all that. Here we go, just zipping over the surface. Now, because this is an entirely artificial world, the level of detail you get is a lot bigger. So I've gone right down to the surface and it just starts to fill in all the detail all the way out to the very edge of this, the, the screen. The amount of detail you can actually get is very much dependent on your graphics card memory, unfortunately. I only have a three gigabytes, you know, graphics card, so I, <laughs> I have to make do at slightly lower resolutions than some of you hardcore gamers out there. Uh, okay, so we've seen planets, we've seen stars, let's go looking for a nebula, right? So we have, like, Thor's head. Like I like that. Thor's helmet, sorry. This is a nebula, which is an emission nebula. It's got like a star in the middle of it that's illuminating the whole thing. And because this is in a simulation, we can actually move the whole thing around and see the volumetrics of it. Now, some of this is, of course, synthesized just to make the game, you know, give you something to do. Some of it, say in the case of uh, Orion's nebula, has actual your know, detail that is based on real academic papers. It's great if you go to the forums for this thing, there's always people publishing new data, new information, and trying to get it incorporated into the game. You can find almost anything. You know what? I wonder if that is... Uh, that's a NGC? Yeah, okay, let's go there. Just random object in space. Look at that, huh? And so these start to be generated automatically. But that's... Do you want a black hole? Let's go to a black hole. Let's go to Sagittarius A star, which is, of course, the supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy. Look at it there, emitting stuff with its accretion disk. Obviously, this is very big, so the uh, accretion disk doesn't appear to move very fast. But if I fly in, we can really get down close into it. Obviously, this is very, very, very bright, and I would be dying of radiation at this point. But as I said, I have godlike powers in this game. <laughs> Here I am sitting, looking out. We can see the disk of the galaxy. We can see the accretion disk. If you really want to see details on the disk, you can manually adjust the camera exposure so you can get that. People just make amazing photos with this and then they use it. The great thing about the black hole is, of course, that it is distorting the accretion disk. I'm actually sitting on top of the disc or below the disc here. Oh, I'm now moving too fast. Let's slow down. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can see how the disc behind the black hole is being bent up like this. I used this engine for my video on what it's like to fall into a black hole. Anyway, look, the great thing is that you can start, you know, just flying out wherever you like. You don't need to look for objects. You don't need to use any of the in-game menus. You can just zoom back or you can fly out, but I like to zoom backwards so that you can see the size of the universe. Now look at the top of the screen. It tells me the speed that I'm flying at. 1,000 light years per second. And that's actually pretty slow. You know what? I'm going to ch change my angle here. This is Milky Way Galaxy. But I can just keep moving, right? I can go a little further out and we've got one of the satellite galaxies here, right? We have them all. If I go far enough, I should be able to see Andromeda floating around here somewhere. Uh, okay, I, I admit I'm not finding it. it it's there. But yeah, this is the local group of galaxies, all laid out, all in the real place. You can select any of these and it will give you the correct information. Oh, that's Triangulum. Hey, Circulus or Circinius. But again, zoom further back and you start to see like large scale structure of the universe. So if you remember, there's this depth survey that looks at whether there are voids or strings. Going further out, it just starts to generate galaxies that are imaginary because they want to keep galaxies being created. I think this is an LRR. Let's just go to it. And the great thing is you can go to one of these randomly generated galaxies and inside it, they will have randomly generated stars and those randomly generated stars may have randomly generated planets. And I say random, it's random but within the rules of physics and everything as we know it. Wow, this is a really red, red thing. Whoa, this looks like the angry galaxy. Let the blue main sequence star here. This is 180 solar masses. I think that might be a bug. 
<laughs> or it might simply be the filter of showing me the brightest objects only. So if we press F2, look, it shows that we do have some objects orbiting it. This is a temperate Jupiter with a number of moons. Ah, uh, that's, that's a bio, do, 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 close this. Oh, no, want to do this. Go back out. What's this? A warm, arid terra with some moons. Let's just go to this one. So I can just take this and fly to it. We have an object which is 90 degrees centigrade. It's floating in a giant red glowing nebula. Perhaps from, I don't know, perhaps it's being an emission nebula. I'm not really sure. I'd have to look up because I'm not an expert on galaxies by any means. I, I don't claim to be an expert on anything. But what I do know is that if you are a fan of space exploration, then this is something that is almost certainly should be on your radar. The old 0.98 version is still available from the Space Engine website. It is completely free and it will keep you busy forever. If you download that and play with it, then I guarantee you're going to want to actually spend the real money to support the real development of this uh, amazing thing. And if you're thinking of using this professionally, by the way, to produce videos or planetarium shows, there's also a commercial license available. So yeah, check it out. It's Space Engine. It's in the Steam store. It's on sale. It's early access. It's, it's everything that I cover, to be honest. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.